on the retro show today. Yeah, I guess we've got a lot to, to thank him for. It's cat. <laughs> Hope this helps you keep up. That's just deceptive and rude. He was just an absolute genius. Not sticks, it's episode six. Oh, hey, Chip Dippers. Oh, hello, Chip Dippers. Welcome back to the bridge of the Starship Retro Prize here in another episode of The, the Retro, Retro Show. Show. My hand is covered in slobber. So we'll edit that out, probably. Uh, you having another blonde moment there? No, that was Josie Fractic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait where is she this week? Um, she's uh, folding her shoes. Well, you told me she was walking her goldfish. That too. Something very fishy going on here. Anyway, from goldfish to old news. Old news. That's old news. And starting, of course, with the very sad news from just over a week ago that Sir Clive Sinclair passed away after a long illness, which is why I'm holding my ZX Spectrum Plus personal computer. And what have you got there? I have the Timex Sinclair 1000. And we've even got the Sinclair ZX Spectrum next over there behind us. So we are big Sinclair fans here. But I grew up with my friend Matty Fractic, uh, and he would come around, play with the Commodore 64 at my house, and I would play with the Spectrum at his house. And um, Regular viewers will know my love of games like Attic Attack, and so um, kind of hit hit us quite hard in the community because I think it's fair to say all of our childhoods were would have been very different without Sir Clive. So we will certainly be doing our bit here to keep his legacy alive and keep those memories burning and keep these machines hopefully not burning. Running. Running is the yes. right word. So rest in peace, at Sir Clive at Sinclair. And Sir Clive was actually from my hometown of Richmond, so we thought it only fitting to send our roving reporter and patron, Leo Fractic, onto the streets of the UK to see how Sir Clive is being remembered. Hello, Leo Fractic here reporting, and we're on the street trying to find out who remembers Sir Clive Sinclair. No, I've never heard of him. No, the ZX Spectrum? No. no. I got a ZX Spectrum for uh, Christmas when I was 12 and I look forward to getting that all year because my friends had one as well and I played on it non-stop for about two years so yeah I remember I remember that very well. The C5 bike? C5? No. no. I remember him uh, making that little bike he was ahead of his time because there's things like that coming out now which back then we thought were ridiculous but now everybody's used them. Indeed. But I suppose history comes round again and uh, now we've got electric vehicles. So sad he didn't catch on. He was quite a cool guy. Had a lot of good ideas. The pocket calculator, I think, was one of his yeah. things as well. But yeah, the ZX Spectrum is what I know him for, yeah. And when I got into like retro gaming, that was like, you know, the big computer of the, of the day and with its rubber keys and the rainbow colour on the keyboard. So. Yeah, I played a few Manic Miner. That was it. That was one of my favourites to play. Hard as nails, like as games. Well, games were back then, weren't they? But um, he taught me things that I never thought I'd ever learn. Yeah, I guess we've got a lot to, to thank him for, really. I I just admire the guy and his memory, and uh, he was just an absolute genius. Thank you so much. And a little meme there on that topic. Anakin says, I just bought myself the best home computer from the 1980s. Oh, wow, you bought an a ZX Spectrum, right? You bought a ZX Spectrum, right? <laughs> Next on old news. That's old news. Is the newest computer to be miniaturized, which is one of our favorites, the Amiga 500. <laughs> That's right, and it's going to be known as the A500 Mini. And this is, of course, made by Retro Games Limited, who make the C64 Mini and the C64 with the, not called the Maxi officially, but with the working keyboard. And this looks so cool. It's 
got some bits and pieces with it too. Yep, it looks like it has a mouse and a controller or what do you call it? Gamepad. Gamepad. And also it's gonna come with worms. I've had worms for a while, as, as we saw actually in the intro to this very segment. Um, but the interesting thing is that's a USB mouse, so you actually be able to use that with, with uh, regular emulators, I imagine, like WinUAE. Uh, or even a regular computer. A real computer? Not real. So this is a real a computer. A modern computer. Same with the gamepad. Um, this looks really cool. We're hopefully going to get an early look at this. Nothing's been confirmed yet, but um, fingers crossed. And if that happens, we'll get Chris Blythe over here from Team 17 to play Worms on the A500 Mini. Uh, have a lot more fun with it. So that's another cool piece of old news. Even nicer. It's nice to see the Rainbow Apple shirts being sold in Cupertino. So Cupertino, you know what that means? That is the headquarters for Apple. Sure is. And remember in the last episode, we talked about them flashing up the old Apple logo at the end of the new iMac commercials. And here they've, they're actually selling the products. The only thing is you can only get them if you go to Apple Park. So if anyone's passing, I'd love two of the uh, old style stripey logo ones, one, e one each. And if they do dog vests, one for them too. Thank I you. wear a size extra small. And I wear a size large. <laughs> Next up, and finally for old news, Casio's reissuing the futuristic digital watch Ripley wore in Alien. Wow. Isn't that cool? So little known fact, after Empire Strikes Back, uh, pro probably Aliens and then Alien are my next favorite movies. Also a big fan of Better Off Dead with John Cusack, a little known uh, movie made by Savage, Savage Steve Holland, I think. What's your favorite movie? I, it might have to be Blazing Saddles. <laughs> we can't do some of the quotes from no. that, but there is a fantastic quote in Better Off Dead. Um, so John Cusack tries Cusack. to- Cusack. 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 There's no Q. It's see you Cusack. Or is it K? Say cumulative. Cumulative. Cus oh, you do. Cum oh, I do as well. <laughs> I think I'm just always wrong. It's okay. Even she knew that. What, what do you say? Oh, we can't say that in front oh, of the Naughty. Yeah. But anyway, there is a scene where he tries to commit suicide because <gasps> um, his high Trigger school one. love, yeah, his high school love broke up with him and jumps off a bridge, Dramatic. falls into a garbage truck, garbage truck goes by two black guys uh, working on an electrical pylon up in their cherry picker. And they look down at John Cusack lying in the garbage truck and they say, Man, and that's a real shame when folks be throwing away a perfectly good white boy like that. <laughs> and it always reminds me of Blazing Saddles. Yeah? Yeah. Anyway, how we got from a digital watch to that, I don't know. Favorite movies, but... Yeah, we don't know. Thank you. Speaking of which... It's Cat! <laughs> and this is, of oh. course, um, on this this month in 1984, yes. what happened? Purple Rain starring Prince was released. Yeah. That. Yeah, she said cat. That is cat. You like cats? She doesn't know the word cats because there's no cats living cat. around here. Cat? No, you, she says I don't. She says sofa. Of course, from Purple Rain to Red Dwarf, that's Cat, for any uh, American viewers who don't know that show and who were confused. Thank you. Next up, this, born this day in 1968. Oh, the X-Files actress Gillian Anderson. Who is that? I don't know who that is. Have you heard of Prince Andrew? Oh, is that? Is that his wife? It was. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fergie, one, I thought she was a big deal over here. She might have been, but she doesn't look, she just looks like a woman at a protest, like. That was back when she was in the Black Eyed Peas. Oh, ha, 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 ha. And uh, also born recently uh, in August in 1961. Billy Ray Cyrus from Achy Breaky Heart, who I have personally met several times. I won't break your heart. Have you? Oh yeah, it the was. toy store that my parents ran used to have a back room that used to facilitate birthday parties and it was like Pokemon themed. And I believe his son, Christopher, uh, had his 13th birthday. What's he like? Short. <laughs> he was fine. I thought Miley was, it wasn't Miley's party? No, excuse me. What's happening here? 
Excuse me. Anyway, this month in 2018, Eminem was number one in the charts in the UK with his 10th studio album, Kamikaze. Of course, Millie Bobby Brown, but yeah. Millie Cyrus, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. And that is it for this week's old news. Old news. That, that's old news. And it is time for I See What You Mean. I See What You Mean. And first up, this is my favorite thing. So he's demonstrating a hard disk recording. Okay, let's listen back to this. Because oh, you just recorded what you were singing into the mic. Yeah, and we can view this. So along with the, not the MIDI capabilities, of a professional sequencer, it also gives you the ability to manipulate and, and there see you are. Uh -huh. digital audio. So let's listen to that back, and you can see the bouncing ball just like the other programs. Oh, like Ghostbusters. And this, of course, is an early uh, predecessor to the system we all have now. You know how they say, name something that lives rent free in your head? Does that song live rent free in your head? Just, just him, right? He's like middle management technical support in a tie. But it's the little the rocking. In his voice but too. also the rocking and swaying, the little smile. <laughs> you know what he was missing at the end? What? Like, na, na, na. <laughs> With the beauty of digital hard disk recording, mm -hmm. you could put that in later. Okay. Yeah. I would love to know. If you, if you know this guy, I would love to track See him down. See where he is now. See what he's doing now. Uh, he's got some pipes on him, though. That's the thing. Well, he's got a pipe. He's got, I don't know what that means, but. You don't expect someone with a suit and tie working for Roland to to belt out that. <laughs> you, sir, are with, a legend. With such confidence. Yeah, I love it. Very funny. Um, now, of course, we just saw recently, about a week ago, the Matrix 4 trailer, teaser mm -hmm. trailer. Did you see it? I did not, but I would Can't like say to. That. Yeah, Pe I saw people it. Just 100,000 people just unsubscribed. All right, now that it's just the three of us. <laughs> But this is, of course... Unfortunately, no one can be told what the dot matrix is. You'll have to see it for yourself. I think that there is one consumer product that has caused more rage. <laughs> <laughs> printers. It is printers. Oh, yeah. Well, fax machines, I feel like, are number two. But printers... like the, I still the... struggle with my printer, though, and I thankfully have outgrown faxing. <sighs> Although some people still require it. I don't. Yeah. Our local sandwich shop actually takes orders by fax. <laughs> and I've thought about making a video where I, I fax them an order from the Amiga using email to fax. <laughs> what would I call it? Ordering a baguette using an Amiga. <laughs> I mean, talk about clickbait. Anyway, to be confirmed. Oh. But we all know oh, this meme. Oh, no. God. This is kind of legendary. But uh, recently, Steve T Tormer and I think other people posted this new stock photo. And it just reminded, maybe they're married, actually, these two. Now, technically, he's he's only slightly touching the metal with the tip of his it's, yeah. middle finger. <laughs> it's just... his, his, his ring finger, which... Is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're right. He's like... I just... But it's just the, <sighs> the confidence and the, the smile. And... Oh, me? And oh, no, I'm I, just working. Yeah. But I like that he's holding it birds. We used to call it bird's beak. It was a writing style. I haven't in school. been educated about my handwriting I, in a long time. But it's I, soldering kind of bird's beak. But why would you... Why Why do you need all of your fingers to hold a... To this day, I still can't. Hand. It still hurts my hand, too. <laughs> anyway. To be fair, I have terrible penmanship, so... We both do. That's, that's why we're married. From terrible soldering married couples to ter terrible penmanship. <sighs> While we have this guy working on his PCB way, it does... <laughs> While this guy's working on his PCB, we know someone who could help you with any of your PCB needs, like PCB Amazon. Way. Oh, PCB Way! <laughs> I got a mouthful for, that's my punishment. Um, PCB Way, of course, make fantastic PCBs, starting at just five bucks. And as we all know, PCB stands Puppy for- Puppy Fractic Chews Biscuits. Doesn't it? Now look at this. We've been here, right? Earl's we have. Court Station. And it has a real police Tardis. box. Tardis. I mean a police box. But look at this. 
I discovered this. This is me scrolling through Street View. Tap on the door of the TARDIS. No. Ding bong. Now look. Now <laughs> you're inside Street View. In, and it is very, I can confirm, it is bigger on the inside. This is uh, David Tennant's TARDIS? I think so. I don't think he's home. No. That's very cool. I hate how much I love stupid crap like this. It, look at the Ethan. You can even go back out the door, which is normal human sized. And then you're at Elle's Court. See, they didn't have to go that hard, but someone did. And I thank them. Yes. Oh, TARDIS. Wait for the little scream. Love that bit. I, I thought that came out of him. The oldest computer was owned by Adam and Eve. It was an apple with very limited memory. Just one bite and everything crashed. Ah. Fat. We're in a, we're in a Mario nightclub. Have you seen this before? No. Wait for it. Oh, damn. Turn it up, guys. Uh-oh. He says, why me? So cool. Is this in Japan? I don't know where it is. Uh, Johan posted it. Uh, Johan. That's all we know. I'd love to have been there, wouldn't you? I love it. Be there or be square. Square little blocks. All right, and that is all we've got time for. For I see what you mean. I saw what you mean. Memed. I saw what you memed. excited for the fun boxing and first up I've already opened this because I had to get something out of it but would you like to delve into the rest oh my goodness so you've been loving through the printing have recently been. <gasps> what oh is my... that I know what this is it's a 3d printed um I want to say like a nightlight type thing like a candle so this is like um the color change filament and this was either changed individually or it's on a ream it's probably it looks on like a it's a ream yeah. yeah i love it and we've got a whole bunch of different filaments here so just different colors i think and three more there but this i think is the piece de la resistance Ooh, an electromagnetic levitation display what's gonna levitate Oh, a box! Excellent! Ooh, this is insane! What? A 3D printed hollow chicken lips. It is a chicken lips. Here is a shot of us. We're going to set it up right now. Here is a shot of it set up. Wow! Wow! We just time traveled forward. To say that and then travel back it looked good in the future You'll, yeah. you'd have just seen it so this came from daniel cott mayor thank you so much daniel uh, he's been very helpful to the channel recently and yeah. um, generous so we really appreciate it and this will go somewhere in my bedroom <laughs> our bedroom right it's all happening one more for you madam what is it? Speaking of Sir Clive Sinclair. Oh my gosh. This is a yellow ZX Spectrum case. How pretty. From 
uh, yellow is my favorite color. So when he offered this on Facebook, uh, I had to say yes. <laughs> this is a very cute note. That is cute. This is Hello Fractic. Here's the yellow spectrum case. Needs a bit of filling the edges here and there. I prefer no mention of me. Just a pass <laughs> out of favor to another retro enthusiast in the future. Well, now you'll understand why his name was just bleeped out and censored when Lady Fracti showed the paper there. But Sorry. To our anonymous donor, I love this. That is so, okay, I, I hate to be offensive, but I hate the color yellow. It, it, it colors make people feel different things and yellow just makes me feel unpleasant. I like it. But I don't dislike this shade of yellow. I really like blue and green, or I like literally every color except for yellow, but I like this one. I'm so happy you said that. I, f I feel like the doot doot guy now. <laughs> Thank you. Beep. And finally. Do not bend. I will bend you to my will. Why do they invent things that are called easy tear that then just break? If only they had created a sharp tool to just... There you go. Dear Lord and Lady Fractic. Oh. Oh. We all sit straight in here. As a professional picker and upcycler, I came across this shortly after discovering your, your YouTube channel. I laughed really hard when I discovered this. Just had to send you a copy. <laughs> Hope this helps you keep up. What is it? Oh, it's because it was a real song um, by Woxy. That's right. Oh, gosh. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Oh, this so, is going in our vinyl player. We'll show this at the end of the episode. Uh, we'll load it up on the rectal player. <sighs> um, so that is from Wes from Lapeer, Michigan. P.S. Lady Fractic, your hair always looks fantastic. Thank you. You didn't even know about this one. I thought you were going to say thank you. You too. But we can't. The, the two-way camera's not working at the moment. Yeah. That's why we call her Lady Fantastic. Oh. Sometimes. And That's sometimes. My face. Sometimes seven of nine. That she is, is blonde, isn't she? She is. All right. Thank you, Wes. <laughs> <laughs> Made a great sound. All right. Back to the show, I think. <laughs> So first up here is Viewfinder by Matt Stark. So you put a 2D image and then you can walk into it and interact with the 2D image, which becomes 3D. So this is a little program or a little, um, I don't know if it's going to be a game for modern consoles or what it's running on, but he just posted a teaser to Twitter, a Twitter teaser. I don't know what's happening, but I'm intrigued. It's almost like an art form slash game, but uh, I love the retro elements. Yeah. Good job, Matt. Uh, this is from Paul Hooker. He's not a hooker, but he does say, I made this paint mash on b3ta.com years ago, the birthplace of Weeble. And it's rather good and has lots of digital puri purility. It's puerile, he said it, not me. Do you get what's going wrong here? It's kind of unfair because it looks normal. The trick is that's an Atari ST with a Commodore badge running Commodore Amiga well, workbench. that's just deceptive and rude and clever. <laughs> and puerile. Thank you, Paul Hooker, who's not a hooker. Um, next up, we did an episode recently on the C64D potentially prototype or aftermarket. We still don't know. I have no update. Uh, one guy said he, he, his dad worked with somebody who worked at Commodore who said they made one prototype for the C64D that we've never seen. It feels unlikely that that's what I have, but if I do... Not bloody likely. I'll be shutting down the channel and we'll move to the Caribbean. Um, or the Caribbean. Caribbean. What are you, a pirate? Why? Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, or that's the, how Well, that's we, how say, we Caribbean. say Caribbean. Actually, technically, I think both are correct. I'm sure they are. In, in that, Translating for us Americans. In that case, yes, thank you. But uh, this is from Dave Eison, who has made a homemade C64D. Got my eyes on him. Out of a DVD player, 
you can see at the back. Mm -hmm. And the front is a the shell of an Amstrad PCW keyboard. And the keyboard is a C Commodore 64. Oh, there's the keyboard. And at the back there, you can see all the C64 ports cut out of the DVD player. And inside, it's running C64 Reloaded Mark II uh, from c64.de, individual computers. But that is a very fun way to uh, house a motherboard that has no case. Turn it into a C64D. Very cool, Dave. Cool. Thank you for sharing that. And that's the end of home brews. Home brews. But I'm a little hungry. Always. Maybe, <laughs> maybe time for some delicious nostalgia flakes. Mm. Uh, first up is Brent Warren, and he has sent us this. This is him proudly posing with his beloved C64 circa 1983, aged 21. Sorry, 12. I was going to say. Uh, he said he was probably about to play... Zork. Or... Mule. Those were the days. They really were the days, Brent. Very cute. Uh, this is John O'Brien. And he sent us uh, this nostalgic photo of him with his Apple IIe, circa 1988, when he was 43. No, we don't know how old he was. Um, but isn't that a happy kid? So excited to play a game right now. Glowing. <laughs> um, this is, was, oh. so do you know what this is? It looks super familiar. So I use this on the channel sometimes. I'll yeah. flash up a test card. This was the BBC test card at the top there that would show like from midnight till 8 a.m. when they would stop broadcasting back in the day. Um, why yeah. do you look disgusted? Because it's a terrifying doll. Well, that's the thing. So it's kind of burned into every Brit of, of my kind of age. I'm 48. I don't know how old you are, but probably 40s, 50s. I'm very sorry. Um, the weird thing is it's also nostalgic. And because we were seeing it through kids' eyes, it wasn't scary then. It was like, oh, it's, oh, it's the girl and, and her clown. But now, when I study that clown, especially the new one below. Well, that's the same. You can tell because it's completely faded and the eyes have been restitched. And Could be yeah. the same. But I'd this is obviously the same uh, woman, Carol Hersey. It's nice to see that she um, wasn't murdered by the clown doll. That and... happened just after this was taken. Oh, okay. But uh, genuinely nice to see that yeah. uh, she's still around and... Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm feeling like I'm getting drawn into his eyes. Anyway, here is a rare photo of a remote control from the 1970s. Mm -hmm. I too have been a remote control when I was a little girl. We had a, a television with a dial on it, even in my youth. Me too, and actually very similar to this. It was a Sony yeah. Trinitron. I think I have photos of my old TV. I'm a little baby and I'm pretty sure there's um, wrestling on the television. But yeah, I did the same thing when I was a little girl. <laughs> and finally, from Marcin Kopka, this is his daughter. He's employed child labor in the Amiga workshop. Hey, at least she knows how to hold a soldering uh, iron. I was going to say the same thing, which brings us full circle to the end of our show. We'll be back very soon with a normal recipode of retro recipes and back in about a month with another episode of The, the retro, retro Show. show. Until then, it just remains for us to say thanks for watching. Subscribe and support below and cheerio. cheerio.